Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall is 12 minutes away from 10 o'clock on Friday night. Back with a plethora of stuff for tomorrow. Um, I four for the flat. It's the last day of the flat season. And I four for the jumps. The start of the winter, we'll say. Um, I nearly had five for the jumps. I'll mention another one that I sort of had. Um, took a few pound off them today. Day started off great with um, JPR1 winning. And I thought snugly. But there was a man telling me today that I was lucky that uh, the horse that was in second got such a bad ride. That he that, that was the best horse. Well, it might be the best horse at two miles four. But two miles or two miles one, I think JPR one is the classier of the two. And it was tuned for the day. Uh, as I said last night, uh, tis our targets um, that meeting. It's drifting out to 11 to 4 as well. I thought that would be 9 to 4 shorter, uh, slightly shorter, and yellow 11 to 4. But happy days are happier days for us. And the forecast in, of course, paid more than if it was the other way around because it was the greater of the two who paid 850. So uh, it was grand. Um, JPR, I think he did. I read that he may be going for the Tingle Creek. He has stopped his game a bit though more. He'll go probably what seven pound for that. That'll bring him into the 155, 156 bracket. So he still has to go another six pound. He's he's young. Um, the other race at two forty five at Hexham. I was saying six year olds won it the last what six years was it? There was two in it, a discount to them. What happened? One of them won it. And the laird had been better to him by the one that was second the last time. Um different track. Our lad needed further as a former second and a pint to pint. Uh, if there was another half a mile, we'd be staying on. Um and that peer pressure tonight. I thought it got a bad ride. Uh, why was he going up? You don't. I was saying last night the jockey was on a bad run. I'm not surprised. Going up on the rail in a in in Dundalk, you don't do that. So similarly in the last race with that um the one that got away, when he ran his races before one and came second or third, he swept around and finished up on the nearest rail. I, I, I don't know unless the track is riding different different surface or something, but. He always come this side. I was disappointed. I thought that would get a place. Um, I was sort of taking on the Fav. Um, did we beat the Fav? Uh, or the one that was Fav or favourite last night? We were sixth, I think. Anyway, pity that didn't get place. Um, shout out to a few names that I didn't get back to yet, but I'll mention them. Paul Duddy, Jared Stokes, Damien Ward and Dylan Mack. You're all welcome on board. Uh, let's go over tomorrow. We'll go with the flat first. And on four, uh, if anyone wants to do a lucky 15 or a Yankee. A Yankee maybe. Um, because there's a, a shorter one. The reason I put in a short was around 7-4, 2 to 1 in both of them. The Wintworth Stakes. Um... There's a horse there that's favourite room service and it's uh, has been unlucky a couple of times you'd read. But unlucky horses are just that they are unlucky. I thought with soft ground in Doncaster an each way play uh was Russet Gold. Seems to run his best races with cut in the ground. Um and has ran group three listed, listed, listed since it was uh, in a handicap. But that was on good ground in Ascot. Um, had big enough prices, but uh, it ran well enough in Ascot the last day. And it beat the Dream Corker a day in Devon. Uh, there was decent horses behind it. I'm having a drop of tea when I'm at it. 
You can make your own. Final quarter of a mile, and it's a Dane deputy now ridden and passed by Apollo One. Jarrah is now been shaken up in the yellow. Vardring the purple sleeve, trying to move into it. Then Rossic Gold, Pure Sangre is hard at it. So too Corka as they run in towards the final half of Furlong now. It is Apollo One from Jarrah. Then Vardri, Rossic Gold, and Corka. It's Apollo One by a length or so, and Apollo One has won the Bengal Stakes. From Jarrah in home in second, Rossic Gold in third. Then Vardri and followed by Corka. I'm having a chocolate chip cookie as well. Hope you don't mind. They're grand. They're the rich ones. So Russet Gold. It was a bigger price there earlier, I see. It was 7 to 1, so there's a bit of dash for it. Um, staying in Doncaster. We have a bus horse that likes soft ground. I prefer if it was heavy for it is Trilby. One for us the last time has been second or the second or third time it won. Third, isn't it? Second. Broke slow on it. It's uh, it's customary to do that. But any time it has soft ground. Second of 14, second of 17, one. And we got away with it here that day. But it's better with cut. Um, it's an each way bet. It's one of two bus horses running tomorrow, so we'll peg it in. Tommy, Tommy Stack. I was going to say Tommy's. Tommy's son Fuzzy sends over two stairs, and the six furlongs will suit as it proved the last day when it won because five was too short the previous time. Um. But it's a case of is it well handicapped or not? Over in England. Broke his maiden on soft to heavy over six last year. Won well enough the last day. 83. What to go up? Was carrying a penalty. Is that it? Yeah, only three pound. Um, that was Trilby. We've seen that is when we won. Um, what's happening here? There in the three ten is a Phillies race listed. Danielle by Cracksman. It's rated 105. Um, it gets £3 from the higher rate of Diamond Rain, but Diamond Rain hasn't ran for 142 days. We spotted Danielle recently. Which is behind Max Vega, mile and a half, group three. We It was ahead of Al Aze. That's a good run. The final three furlongs now. Um, still God's window showing That's in there. front. Max Vega in second place. Danielle uh, coming there on the outside of those. Alazi is next to uh, a blue and white colours. On the left is Salt Bay ridden along. And then comes Feigning Madness. And now Danielle comes through to join Max Vega in front. Alazi is pulled out wide for his challenge. God windows is weakened behind those. They head down to the last furlong. And in the red cap. Uh, the black and white jacket, Danielle, with Max Vega fighting back against the running well. Alas is two lengths behind him in third place and struggling to pick up. And Max Vega, will he win it again? Max Vega and Rob Holby showing in front and are beating off the challenge of Danielle. It's a second win in the race for Max Vega to Danielle. On the ratings, it's between the two of them. Like you look at their synology is rated 90, uh, treasure rated 97. 90 there's only two over the hundred one hasn't raced for uh, a long time so we're going with the farm horse um bringing it back and trip it'll be out it'll be up at the pace all the way it'll be sort of catch me if you can and then we come to the fa final race the november handicap 
This is very good to us two years ago. We tipped up a 10 to 1. Winner is one of 13 to 2. Messier, wasn't it? 13 to 2. Smooth one smooth operator one that that finished up in Australia since. Uh, three year olds don't do that well in it, but so a three year old won it uh, on soft ground three years ago and won it in eight years ago. Um, I'm going with a three year old in it. We can find it. Did I pass it out? I did. I did. Master Builder. Buick back. He won for his two runs back. And Buick was in the Irons. And then the last hit was in York. But he, he got there too soon, I thought. Um, and a stronger run mile and a half that he can come in one sweep and run that's him near the back there and at this time this is him here night brings them in. Going quick enough for they stay at this stage just a little closer to the inside running row minstrel night over filibustering on the near side getting into it and then the reverend on the far side shadowing who's glad master build of the gray beginning to make very smooth progress and he gets bothered as well course, coming this to fellow comes the over in front of forest gate a little bit short of daylight in the green and orange so on down now to the this last book. quarter mile minstrel night filibustering master builder on the left the reverend on the right is being asked for more they're almost four in a line with a furlong and a half to go but minstrel night is pulling out more here trying to fend them off master builder challenging just had minstrel night running into its path minstrel night drifts right across the rail but has gone two lengths clear from master builder filibustering and the reverend and minstrel night is going to make every inch under a well-judged ride from aiden keely minstrel night wins the william hill for minstrel night he came he crossed over there you can't do that in a staying race. Um, Minstrel Light. He going up six pound for that. So we're hoping to turn the tables on that. He's an eight to one. He actually opened up um, twelves earlier. He's eights with a lot of them now. Valvano. Um, you'd imagine it's between. The two, and actually the other three year old in the race as well we were on at the last and were disappointed but the ground was too heavy for it was waxing gibbous um, soft ground you'd get away with it um, but just too heavy the last day because just second uh, to in a good race before that to Pung Poet not Pung Poet Epic Poet but that was good ground. It's too heavy the last day. That's them four, isn't it? Now, on to the jumps. We have a bus horse here in the Grand Sefton. The last couple of years we were on Persuasion. It was placed both years for us. But Sure Touch uh, done us a great turn in the summer plate in Market Raisin. Won at 14 to 1. Uh, any horse that wins at 14 to 1 we got to back it next time we'll have a quick peep at this that's it there in the Stuart colours the Princess Gullis who are the first two Stuart Church and Mole Court risking the ground out wide Frankie de Belay with every chance on the heels of the leaders jumped alongside Soul Icon and then Boom Born who's also going well out wide Vintage Fizz is getting a little closer then Paris Encore and now they begin to make the run down the hill so they've got less than five furlongs to go in the Unibet Summer Plate, but still many chances. White CCS Portachevo on the inside of Prince Escalus. These are the first two. Molecourt always in the vanguard is in third. Soul Icon against the fence is in fourth with wristing the ground around his outside. And then on the heels of the leaders is the horse looking for the third win in the race, Frankie de Berlay. Vintage fist towards the outside of Paris Encore, who is trying to rally. Boomborn with a wall of horses in front of him towards the inside. 
They're then being followed by Fix It All and the Big Lens. They're lining up now as they go over the third from home. It was Prince Aeschylus with Soul Icon over on the far side. Statuario. Now on the near side is Sure Touch. Here's the second last Sure Touch and Soul Icon with the first two. And then back in third and staying on Risk in the ground. Statuario over on the far side. The final fence in the summer plate. Sure Touch is on the near side. Soul Icon over towards the far side fence. They've got a half furlong to go on the flat, and there's very little between them. So Lycon on the far side, sure touches on the near side, racing up towards the line. It's a close call in the summer plate. Near side. Yeah, I was watching that coming to the toll after coming out of the tunnel, uh, coming out of Limerick. Um, I, I was listening to it. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hear it, and I couldn't pull in on the, to watch it on the phone. King Turgeon won the, the last day. Um, there's always um, a question mark. It's always, you know, about jumping the fences, whatever. But um, if anyone wanted to back persuasion, it's known to go around the course. Um, we were around the last couple of years. If if I was taking one, if, per, if uh, what do you call it, sure, touch wasn't in it, I probably would go with that. But anyway, that's it. This is um, entry, uh, Handicap Chase. Imperial Saint. I was impressed with this uh, book the last day. Um, in entry, went out and he made all. And it was his first run over uh, over fences, but he was a former pint to pint winner. Um, I think he should have won the one. Uh, there was one that ran out just before the. Saint, the leader, Densworth the outside, That's Imperial Saint, Densworth, Paris Encore, moving well. like Mini trying to come through and challenge, and is challenging for second place, Imperial Saint still held together in front, the final ditch, two out, Imperial Saint with Move It Like Mini moving alongside, then Paris Encore from Densworth, Petit Tonnerre trying to stay on with Hidalgo de Lille, Goodwin out of contention, Imperial Saint asked to go, this Move It Like Mini out. is a huge threat, these two going on to the final fence, then Paris Encore, Petit Tonnerre is staying on here is the final fence then move it like mini and imperial say and move it like mini has shied and run out at the last imperial saint left in front of paris encore and petty tonnerre drama at the final fence imperial saint's lead is dwindling but the line is coming and imperial saint wins the jason salomon that petite encore that's a decent yardstick that had run four times over fences before uh hunter legend for Venetia, first run um, this year. Um, that'd be that's a decent horse. It hasn't ran in a while since it ran in Bangor. Um, five runs over fences, two wins, two places. Yeah, it hasn't ran since Bangor. But we'll go with the one that has won over the track, and then. The Badger Beard Handicap Chase. Um, I was looking for a second year novice in this. Uh, came down with The Changing Man by Walk in the Park. Chazer's Yard, as we found out today, is fairly forward. But this says, um, hasn't won over fences, but it has to second, first time out last year. To uh, stay away, Faye. Then it's unseated and just challenging that day in Sandown. Maybe could have won, I thought. Um, then just behind the Grey Dawning, up in class, sort of. Uh, ran well then against uh, Regal Blue. I slightly disappointed didn't go past that day. I'd imagine it would have traded low in running. Um, have a time to have a look at it. Sure, look at the man that made time, made plenty of it. So the That's main immense. group of five now beginning to move Back away. Here. They've got four fences left this to is jump the in the best three six That's five it, novices yeah. handicap chase. Regal Blue has made every yard of the running to this point. The Mayor Fortune favours De Bold on the right. Val Dancer, the pink and purple. The changing man on the left will jump in in a third position. He's gone past Fortune favours De Bold. Then Haraki Golf. They're well clear of the other two. And now they come to the final ditch. 
Regal Blue from Val Dancer and the changing man on the outside. There were three in a line. Clear of Haraki Golf. Fortune favours the bold, a bad mistake. Evis Vladimir's been pulled up. They're coming to the final fence. Uh, the second last fence and it is the changing man on the left regal blue on the right and the changing man uh, coming through under brendan powell to try and take it up regal blue is battling back on the far side valdanza being left behind in third here is the final fence the changing man regal blue uh, in the air together regal blue on the far side the changing man on the left trying to battle back but Regal Blue pulling him off an Exco field and Regal Blue. Seems to get tired in that uh, heavy ground as well. And if you look at it, it was good to soft in his best run there, you'd imagine, first time out. And one more, isn't there? Oh, yes. We're going to Gorn Park. For their last one, a horse that opened up a bigger price there earlier. It actually opened up at 14s, and I missed it because I was think I didn't think to be in that fast, but they were in. Uh, this is a two runs back, two and a half mile. hadn't ran for a while, and it was good ground, similar to what it's getting tomorrow, sort of. Followed by Rockview That's Road, Harding here on Street, Levis to Juliet and Hidalgo de Mar. It's leading line and Jack Kennedy at the second last. Safely over, albeit untidy from Rockview Rome and Letters of Juliet, Hidalgo de Mar, followed by Harley Street, Gustavo Goodway and Fremantle is Doctor. But it is leading line out clear. Coming to the final flight, the Reddens of Betty's Town, two and a half mile handicap and over in front and clear. Is leading line, a bad mistake by Letters to Juliet. Paddy O'Brien was limpid like in the play has lost second however to Gustavo Goodway but it is leading line winning alone from Gustavo Goodway and led us to Juliet Paddy O'Brien was lucky he wasn't down on his hole at the last but the other horse was fit um, wasn't that the horse that we had won on in across the pond wasn't it but it hadn't ran from last December under the 50 to 1 shot. That was two and a half mile. And then the last day in the stole, it didn't stay, and the ground seemed to be against it. You can have a look at that race if you. No, it has something else I was thinking of. It was the shark's heart. Went up thirteen pound, didn't do much since. But it's not the best of a race. So that was an each way play, uh it was halved nearly in price. Still thirteen to two, but it was fourteens earlier. So um that's the crack now. Get this into the oven, it's ten past ten now. So bash the bookies over and out.